I should watch this. I've been fucking fucking with Eda since last year around this time. I don't remember. Playing around and stuff. We would go to the studios. Kids, me, and, me and my friends, we was playing around and stuff. We would go to the studios, kids and stuff. And then uh, I wound up making Ready for War when the gang was in the stool. I dropped it and it went crazy. I just was like, I got to keep going. Is there a more popular genre of music? Ready for War. I didn't remember how that shit sounded, bro. This keyboard's mad sensitive, bro. This song is so hard, bro. This is first song. Gang, gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Bow. Are them niggas one beef? Sugar Hill, we get the money. Yo, we run these streets. Two shots, with two shots. So please not run up on me, don't run up. Yeah, that shit hard, bro right now than drill with big time oh, artists man. like fabio foreign chief keith lil dirk digga d unknown t and so many more it is a bona fide subgenre of choice for many hip-hop fans and guess what now you've got another name to add to that list and this dude might just be the youngest of them all i'm talking about new york's own edot baby at the ripe young age of just 16 edot has captured the attention of the east coast hip-hop scene with his wild passion and ample brash energy and just because my man is young don't expect them not to speak on things like gang affiliation, drugs, guns, violence, and the rest, because all of it was a big part of his life growing up. Want to learn the inside scoop on the come up of E. Baby? Then keep watching our newest episode of Before They Were Famous. We both was heating up, and then for me, we just tapped in, and then for me, I think it's just been close. Viral. Would y'all consider yourself like a duo? Yeah, like the best best man, no. yeah, I know the, the best duo. Stop playing. Or alright, so do do you think do you guys consider yourselves like the best uptown rappers? Facts. Facts. Why you why you guys believe that? Cause we started this. Shit. Well, rap though. <laughs> <laughs> e Dot Baby was born Elijah Irvin on February 6, 2005, in Harlem Hospital in New York City to his parents, Tanaya Gabriel, a hairstylist, and his father, Vincent Irwin. As a child, E Dot says no one in his family really worked all that much, which may be the reason why he was handed off to a legal guardian named Tiffany Taylor, who he lives with to this day, in the neighborhood known as Sugar Hill in Harlem, located on the Upper West Side. You're from Harlem, right? Yeah, that's a fact. Harlem. Harlem. Sugar Hill. So, so it's like 150th Amsterdam, Upper West Side. What you got a ski mask going for? You know what I'm saying? For mm -hmm. me, close to the heights for me, but not the heights. In Manhattan, Harlem is different from other boroughs because it's closer. Despite living with someone outside of his own family, Elijah has fond memories of the time he spent hanging out with his mom when she would take him shopping. Even if there was one time when he got really ticked off at her for refusing to let him go inside any of the stores that he wanted to visit and basically robbing him of his day. Living under Tiffany's roof, his three household siblings are Tiffany, Jordan, and Loris. They're all older than Elijah, who is somewhat ironically the baby of the crew it wasn't always easy between these siblings and they they're gonna know too much because i believe they hit you up and they ask you about yourself and you ask specific questions you answer it you can most likely decide what to say or not but if you don't care then that's probably why they got the info or probably through watching all his interviews so oh shit they fought a lot, but over time, they came to truly love one another. On his eighth birthday, when Elijah was asked which sibling he wanted to spend the entire day with, he says making that decision was the hardest choice he's ever had to make. Alongside his siblings, Elijah spent a lot of time outside as a kid, playing the usual sports like baseball and basketball. When it came time for school, he attended a middle school called Community Healthy Academy of the Heights. Eventually, however, he was transferred to a new school. MS-324 after getting into a whole bunch of fights at his previous stop. After graduating from middle school, he'd move on to Capital Preparatory High School. Now, in terms of his That's academics, Elijah's favorite class was always math. But if we're being- when you say take down, you mean like a Rico, a Rico case for the whole Bronx? I mean, he's not from the Bronx from Harlem, but yeah, you, that's what you mean. Being perfectly honest with you, he never was much of a fan of school. His fondest memory of the place was the time that he brought weed the class in his freshman year and stunk up the entire school. Yeah, we've all been there, eh, Elijah? The smell was so pungent that Elijah was <laughs> running around the whole place trying like to find too. a solution, but only making the situation worse the entire time by spreading the aroma everywhere. Eventually, a teacher pulled up on him, and I'm sure we can imagine what happened next. Elijah only finished one year at high school before the pandemic hit and shut everything down for an extended period of time. Soon afterwards, he would drop ready for war, and he hasn't been back to school since. Growing up, Elijah would look up to rappers like Young Thug, Rich Homie Kwan, and Lil Wayne. This 
this was around the early stages of the 2010s when the music videos for these artists were popping off in a big way over on Vivo, where Elijah would consume these videos vigorously. But it wasn't his fandom for rap music that would. Soul Sal Salvation. Who that? That's not familiar. Every time I see Soul Salvation, I think of um sensational. I mean, Ron for a reason, and I don't know why. That nigga accounts be different on every social media motivate him to try his own hand at the game it was also the situation that he found himself in mistakes happen bro everybody ain't perfect for me true it's just what you want to do it's all about your next move make your next move your best move because that could be your last one for me yeah. so that's just how i look at it like i, I think it's wrong care. maybe i don't anybody remember passes, i ain't gonna lie anybody passes it's what you working on now for me. Yeah. When Elijah first started out rapping as a kid, it was alongside the older kids of his neighborhood crew who really just did it to amuse themselves for a good time. I mean, it was basically fun and games to them. Back then, Elijah and his boys would crowd around a little monitor with a blue snowball mic in Elijah's room and record track after track. After discovering that they really enjoyed the art of creating music, they decided to hit up a local studio, but it wasn't meant to last. The problem is that as much fun as they were having creating music, Elijah and his boys were also wrapped up hustling on the streets of Harlem. Eventually, all this time on the streets caught up with them. For me, stuff happened. Yeah. And for me, you, you know. Think they just stereotype you? Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. all they really be about, bro. People just, once you got an image, bro, it's... Mmm, niggas say carry me. Carry is crazy. Carry. When he said carry, I thought of my man, Marvin. But Panda, I remember you. It's crazy because I never met you in person before, though, but I remember you. It wasn't been like four years. Five, I don't even know, bro. That's when I first started gaming and shit. I took down all those videos. Well, not that they were private. No, no, no. Some of them are unlisted. It's hard to get away from that. He and his crew were in and out of jail for robberies, assaults, and other crimes of those sorts. Then the four of Elijah's best friends got caught up on some more serious charges that they're still fighting to this day and might prevent them from ever seeing the light again. After this happened, Elijah recognized that he needed to get more serious about his music if he didn't want the same thing to happen to him. Part of him still considers music to be just fun and games, but he also still appreciates the process because it reminds him of his best days with his friends who aren't exactly with him right now. With the support of his siblings and friends like Roscoe, Himi, the Benzo, 30, and Keem, all of whom kept him motivated, Elijah came up with the name himself during the process of creating his first hit song, Ready for War. In the lyrics to that track, Elijah spits, she liked that E. Dot baby. He wrote that in third person <laughs> as like I said, three ads just smoked me. As if a shorty really was calling him baby, and I guess it seemed to catch on with a lot of people, all of whom looked to call him E. Dot baby. So just like that, he found his name by accident. When Ready for War took off in early 2020, E. Dot Baby was still only 15 years old and yet had somehow took off to that track, Elijah Spitz, she liked that E. Dot Baby. He wrote that in third person as if a shorty really was calling him baby, and I guess it seemed to catch on with a lot of people, all of whom looked to call him E. Dot Baby. So just like that, he found his name by accident. When Ready for War took off in early 2020, E. Dot Baby was still only 15 years old and yet had somehow managed to capture the imagination of his entire city. Over the span of 12 months, the music video to that single would rack up over 2.5 million views on YouTube, as well as another- Yeah, he young, he's fit 16, yeah, yeah. There are 1 million streams over on Spotify. He continued to drop one single after another with and when he dropped ready for he was like 15, 14. Titles like War Cry, Different Shit, and the uber popular Ride the O. He also collaborated with a number of big time drill artists like Busy Banks and Leaky G Bando on tracks like Demonstrate and James Bond respectively. Then in December of 2020, he dropped his debut EP, fittingly titled The Baby in the Game. Now as busy as 2020 was for Eda Baby, 2021 wouldn't bring any downtime. He continued to record and release further singles like Finish the War, Snapback, and- I think a lot Eda had a big gap between like, he don't, he not consistent, that's my thing, but he hard. Right down gang all of which would accumulate hundreds of thousands of views on youtube with only a handful of months between this nearly unbelievable youth and his ever-growing momentum it's easy to imagine that Eda baby is going to be around for a long long time as far as his own career goals are concerned, he plans to stay focused on being able to do more for the people in his circle and help get all his boys a piece of that generational wealth because he knows that the only person that can that generational wealth He's not from the Bronx. How he gonna be top five? He's from Harlem. Real for me, certified plaque. Like for me, as far as like my. Sh 
platinum gold. I need one of those. I, I want to just let me go crazy, do shows and shit. All that fun superstar shit. As for the rest of Ida Baby's story, well, that'll be for another time and another place. After all, this is before they were famous. My name is Clyde Smith, and if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Why does it say UK's NBA Dick Young Boy? D is without a doubt one of the UK's NBA Young Boy is crazy.